Hello, America. As you just saw in Rumors of War 3, Target U.S., it is obvious that terrorists are in this country, that they have either infiltrated or we have just opened up the front, back, and side door of our government and welcomed them in. They're using our own resources to work against us. The administration is acting, I believe, as an unindicted co-conspirator. We wanted to spend a few minutes here in the next 45 minutes and take some of your questions and also just kind of talk about what we've seen. Joining me now, Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin. He is former Undersecretary for Defense for Intelligence. Diana West is here. She's the author of Death of the Grown-Up. Andrew McCarthy, former uh, federal prosecutor and author of The Grand Jihad. And Buck Sexton, formerly with the uh, CIA and currently our national security editor for The Blaze. Um, first of all, let me ask you this. Uh, this is... If reasonable Americans, not partisan on either side, reasonable Americans would watch what we've just seen for the last hour and 13 minutes, I can't believe that's not a knockout punch for any president. I don't care who it is, because there's more than reasonable doubt that we're in real trouble and this administration is dismantling us from the inside. Anybody want to take that on? We've actually had a number of trials involving jihadists over the years. When you show ordinary people exactly what is going on and why it goes on, they get it instantly. Uh, I think the reason that people aren't more outraged is that they're, they're, they haven't seen they don't know. enough of this. They don't know. I mean, um, I've worked at CNN and I've worked at Fox. You were kicked off of CNN uh, just for saying the president was a Marxist in 2008. Socialist. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, imagine, uh, uh, imagine what they would say here. Well, people, viewers, American citizens, do not have context to simply look at what you've put on tonight and have it resonate with what they've been hearing their elected officials say, what they read in the newspapers, etc. That's what makes it very difficult to push these ideas because they have been withheld due to censorship and self-censorship. And smeared. Anybody who says this. I mean, I was, watching the, I was watching Twitter as this thing was on. The attacks of hate monger Glenn Beck's at it again. All this stuff just pops up right away. I mean, you're immediately smeared. And, you know, I, I responded on, on Twitter tonight. Any responsible, honest journalist would either disprove these facts or air this. One of the two. But they'll do neither because they can't disprove it. Here's the thing, Glenn. All you have to do is go to the websites for these organizations that we were talking about, these front groups for the Muslim Brotherhood. Go to their websites. Read what they've written. Listen on YouTube to the speeches that they've made. They have made very clear their intentions for America. Yet even when we uh, explain what they've said, what they've written, we get marginalized and, and we are the ones that are considered intolerant. And uh, it, if you just pay attention to what they say, you will know exactly what their intentions are. I mean, that's, you know, people say to me all the time, uh, Boy, how did you see that one coming? Well, you listen to them. <laughs> right. You take people. In 1999, I was on the air in, in uh, New York City. And conservatives who didn't know who I was, conservatives were calling me because I was defending uh, Bill Clinton when he bombed the missile or the, uh, the baby aspirin factory. Yeah. And I said, have you read the words of Osama bin Laden? This guy's going to come over and kill us. He means it. And it, it always just goes down to politics, and nobody actually reads the words. And in this case, Buck, the words are different in America than they are when they're speaking to their own people in, in Arabic. They, they say all kinds of stuff in Arabic. Uh, it's common, common practice. I mean, this has been the case going back. What, Arafat was actually really the master of this, saying one thing in Arabic and then one thing when the CNN cameras were on in English. I think he sort of established a high bar for that, actually. It's just saying completely disparate things, depending on the audience. 
Um, and, and as for penetrations, I have to say, even to this day, uh, we're, we're discussing how, how could this happen? How could there be people involved with government that have these sorts of views or have these connections? Uh, people still refuse to admit that there were communist penetrations of the United States government, even after the declassification of the Venona cables. Books have been written on this. But, but, the Alger Hiss, I mean, there, there's still arguments about this. People still act like that did not happen. I, found a, I just found a quote from FDR who was, was uh, given a speech and he said, look, some of my best friends are communists. <laughs> I mean, there's a quote from FDR and, and, and 10 years later we're acting like, ah, oh, there's no, there was never any communists well, here. But the communists didn't have uh, actually a motto where they came out and said that uh, Allah is our objective, the Koran is our law, jihad is our way, dying in the way of Allah is our highest objective. Um, but you know what, we, we used to, I mean, in the, 19, in the 1950s, um, we did unite. I, I, can, I contend that, um, has anybody read Blacklisted by yes, History? Yes, I have. Yep. Wonderful book. Wonderful yeah. book. Yes. I read that and I read about the first two chapters and I thought, I'm going to put this book away because I don't know if I want to believe these things about my country. I had to go back a few months later after I checked that author out, make sure that he was really rock solid. I didn't want to read some conspiracy stuff. McCarthy was right. Yes. But McCarthy now, because they were so good at discrediting him, and, and he made his own mistakes. I mean, he was right. a drunk and everything else, but... Well, <laughs> perhaps not. That may be part of the echo chamber attacks that we all face. Yeah, it's a, yeah okay. But, you know, but he, I mean, I mean he, had some, he had some issues. You don't think he had some issues himself? I think... He was an imperfect messenger. I would say we're all imperfect messengers. Yes. But I, I think that what he ran into in spades as the paradigm of this phenomenon, he ran into the echo chamber that said, better red than dead. Um, there are no red baiter. Flash forward 50 years, now we get Islamophobe. Right. And we are, we, we, we are not permitted to take these these statements at their face value and consider what the implications are right. indeed we are trained to look at a bombing done by islamic jihadists and say repeat after me islam is a religion of peace and that mental conditioning is exactly why looking at something like this becomes difficult for people and when you actually twin that with the fact that under islamic law it is against islamic law to criticize islam we have put ourselves under, we have submitted to that aspect of Islamic law, which is why I believe we have this, this penetration but problem see, think, and that nobody addresses. I think, I mean, let me go back to McCarthyism here for just a second. Yeah. I think he now has, now you can't say communist without being laughed at. So he Correct. really did real damage to anybody who said, hey, there's communists, and some of them are in the White House, and Jones is one of them. Um, and the same thing is happening now, like you said, yeah. with, hey, you know, I know Dr. Ju Ju uh, Zudi Jasser. He's a great man, a great American, loves his country. He's also Muslim. I don't think he wants to blow himself up, and he doesn't want to blow the country up. Um, however, there are those that do. You know, when you said communists back in the 1950s, all communists, if I'm not mistaken, do you know any happy communists that didn't want to thwart our system? All communists wanted to do that. But now we can't talk about communism and we can't talk about Islamism as, as it is. And which is more dangerous, General? I mean, here they're combining in many ways. Which is more dangerous? Well, the 1950s work. communist or, or now? I, I, I think that you have to take it out of the, the context of the time because it's a much different country today than it was in the 50s. Um, you now have not only... Uh, Islamists and leftists working together, you have a legal culture which, is, which makes the country vastly different than it was in the 50s and gives them an array of tools which they can use under the heading of human rights or uh, civil rights and a variety of other things that they... Uh, but, you, but you also don't have a culture left. I mean, we, we barely have a culture that people are willing to stand up and say, America is a great place. Yes, America, America has some great ideas. We've screwed it up. We've really made some bad mistakes. We've spent too much. We're focusing too much on stuff, et cetera, et cetera. But it's unlike any other place. You're not even will people aren't even willing to right. defend that now. Right. Well, you, but you have a political class, and this is why I think they ally so seamlessly with the Islamists. You have a political class and a media which, even if they don't agree on methodology, 
buy the same narrative about America yeah. and America being guilty, America always being in the wrong. Uh, and the greatness of the country has not been something that was pushed to the fore for the last it's half kind a of century. It's thinking in a way that got us into bed with people like Mubarak. You know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And so you kind of overlook some of the really bad stuff and you're like, okay, well, he's got torture chambers or whatever, but, but he's good over here. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's, it's this... Compromise. Yeah. Complicity. I think, I, yeah. Well, I think another difference between the 50s and now is that because there was still a devotion to the Constitution at large in the culture, the, the, the population sent uh, representatives to Washington who were willing to investigate the communist infiltration. I mean, many, many more besides McCarthy, Carol Reese, Martin Dyes, Pat McCarran, a number of representatives, senators, conducted tremendously important landmark Investigations, mm -hmm. thank goodness, because that is the record that we can look back to. We do not have that in Congress today. You you went to Washington, um, and you spoke to members of Congress about the things that were in this documentary. Diana and I were both there with a member of Congress who had just come from the FBI headquarters, where this uh, this Congress person was uh, actually able to review the documents that were removed from the uh, counterterrorism training for all the FBI and federal law enforcement. And this congressman said to us, I was absolutely appalled at what was removed. After reviewing it, going through it, and, and looking at bits and pieces of this thing, specific subjects, uh, the assessment was there was absolutely nothing that was not factual, there was nothing that was offensive, but these were things that the Muslim Brotherhood, as represented by ISNA and CARE and these plethora of other organizations, wanted removed because it was revealing. It was taking the veil off of what the Muslim Brotherhood you, was doing. You said, and I wrote this down in there, you said Clapper, our national intelligence guy, was either having a bad day I wrote that down. Having a bad day, or 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 had forgotten, or something. I, I don't believe that. I, I don't being, believe either of those. Listen, I was being gen, uh, you know, generous, uh, generous in this. Uh, you know, I have a little political correctness in me as well. Um, I didn't mean that, and I don't want to be tagged with that. But having said that, look, I, I know Jim Clapper, and I must tell you, it's kind of like Bob Mueller. Jim Clapper is a very smart man, and Jim Clapper has served his nation well. And that's why I find it so incredible that Jim Clapper, having studied intelligence for as long as he has, would make a public statement, particularly one to the Congress, that this is a largely secular organization that has eschewed violence. No, they have not eschewed violence. They created Hamas to be their violent arm. They've created other entities to be the violent arm of the Muslim it's, Brotherhood. It's Van Jones. Van Jones said, drop the radical pose for the radical ends. That's what's happening here. That's right. I mean, if you look at their new slogan, it was, Islam is the answer. They just announced they changed it to, um, Renaissance is the people's will. Help me out. You've been, to, you've been to the Middle East a lot. Renaissance? Is that a, is that a... A Middle Eastern idea? A popular one? Pretty sure it's not catching on like wildfire over there. No, definitely not. Neither is the Enlightenment. Um, so, look, I think part of this also is, uh, you know, you mentioned Islamophobia. There are some very handy rhetorical tools that, that the left and sort of these groups use in order to shut down the discussion, especially when it goes into uncomfortable places. When you ask questions about, um, well, do you support violence? Under what context do you support violence? They'll even claim, for example, that criticism of, of Islam is racist, which anybody with the globe and, you know, knows the religious uh, demographics of the world would say, well, what does that even mean? You know, we're talking about Indonesians, we're talking about Arabs, we're talking about Somalis. I mean, it's just a nonsense term. But what could be more effective in America to get discussion to stop than to just say, oh, you're, you want to Islam and democracy, are they compatible? Well, how about you're just a racist? And, 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 and I think it was you that said that you put a, you put, they, they knew, hang in a single civil rights banner. Yeah. Yes. Well, look, the language problem, Glenn, is an enormous problem. Just take, take one simple but important thing. Freedom. The word for freedom in Arabic conveys a concept that's almost completely the opposite of what we think. Freedom to, to the Muslims is perfect submission to Allah's law. Right. 
it's virtually the opposite of what we mean by freedom. But when we have these these cross-cultural conversations, we don't we don't define our terms. So we're we're using the word freedom, but we're talking about two different things. When they look you in the eye and they say, if you're the Muslim Brotherhood operative, um, I reject terrorism or I condemn terrorism. Well, his definition of terrorism is terrorism under Sharia. He's not he's not talking about the same thing that you're talking about. He's talking about the unlawful killing of Muslims. I have, I have talked to several military guys who have been over there and been in Afghanistan, and I mean partners, right. you know, NATO partners, and, uh, you know, the Afghanis. They'll be, they'll be in there and they'll be fighting right with the guy. And they look at us when we figure out we've lied to them and they'll say, you lied to me. You lied to me. And they look at him like, of course I lied to you. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's what I do. Right. It, it almost looks, I mean, we look like infants to them yeah. because right. it's part of the culture. Is that wrong or right? Because that's what I've heard from soldiers. That oh, it's yes, theological. Absolutely. It's called tekiah. Uh, it, lying is not only permitted, but uh, it, it, it's actually uh, required to protect or further the faith. Right. And now, part of the part I, I, let me sorry. say this. And I think it's important here on your program, Glenn, this documentary, I, I hope that uh, this gets very wide dissemination because, it, as you said, any reasonable American would look at this and say, holy mackerel, our government's not telling us everything and our media is certainly not telling us. Uh, that's, what, that's our frustration. But I want to also say, this is not about every Muslim in America. No. This is about the Muslim Brotherhood. The problem is the only voice in America today for Muslims is the Muslim Brotherhood. You know how Zudi has been treated when he stands up and tries to say jihad down. is not our way. Uh, they marginalize him. Uh, they even kick him out of a mosque that he helped to found. And uh, he's routinely criticized and threatened. This is not about every Muslim in America. This is about the Muslim Brotherhood that came here with the stated purpose of destroying our Constitution. Okay, let me ask this question. This comes in from Ken. Rumors of war. Does Romney understand this threat? I think that Governor Romney ha may have had a better fix on this threat than presidential candidate Romney. And I say that because he had very uh, good instincts when a former president of Iran visited Massachusetts as, to get a degree from Harvard, of course. And Governor Romney did not give him motorcycle escort and indeed released a very strong statement uh, uh, decrying jihad against Israel and the West. And I think that presidential candidate Romney is more confused. He's tried to separate jihad from I, Islam. And I, will tell you I hope that, he sees your documentary. <laughs> I will tell you that um, uh, the first question I ever asked him when he started running for president and he didn't know it was coming, and this was four or five years ago, I said, tell me who the 12th imam was. Uh, tell me who the 12th imam is headed down. And I thought, how many politicians five years ago can tell me about the 12th Imam? I mean, he at least understands intellectually. Yeah. I don't know if he feels it in his gut. You have a comment? Anybody else have a comment on, on this? I, I'm worried that, um, and I think the jury's out on him. I have, I have hope for him, so I don't want yeah. I, I to sound like I'm being pessimistic. But you do have to worry that there's a very strong current of thought in the Republican Party that is as interested in miniaturizing the threat as the media is. So, you know, let's take a break because I yeah. want to come back to that because there were pictures, there were lots of pictures of Barack Obama with spooky people, but there's also pictures with right. with George Bush. Oh, and, absolutely. And, and I'd like to go to Grover Nordquist if anybody wants to go to sure. Grover Nordquist on, on his role and what's happened because that's from the right. right. And they're bo both the right and the left are scary on this issue. The American people are right in the center and they're like, well, just, can we use common sense? Back in a second. Democrats maintain their Senate majority. Harry Reid celebrates.
Don't let this happen. You still have the power to take the Senate. Glenn Beck and FreedomWorks for America are committed to mobilizing millions of patriots to fire Harry and take the Senate. We must begin now. Donate $20.12 to TakeTheSenate.com and get this great bumper sticker. Glenn Beck, FreedomWorks, and you, an unstoppable force. But we must have your donation today. Go to TakeTheSenate.com now. Preparation, focus, hard work. It's a personal commitment. It's what drives me. It gives me the confidence to look my opponent in the eye and say, game on. Preparing for life's future challenges is just as important. Food Insurance Emergency Food Supply gives me the same assurance that I'm ready for whatever comes my way. Preparation is everything. Order today at foodinsurance.com. The TRS Files, True Tax Resolution Stories. Hi, I'm Stuart B. I'm in the insurance industry and I'm from Southern California. I faced a potential liability of $106,000. Tax Resolution Services settled for $9,200. If you owe the IRS over $20,000 or more in back taxes, have unfiled returns, or are under audit, call Tax Resolution Services now, 888-7804-TAX, or visit taxresolution.com forward slash GBTV. So, I want to... Uh, are, are you worried about backlash from Rivers of War? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were talking about this off the air. How dangerous is this, General, to do what we've done? Or how, how stupid is this? Well, I'm glad I have a concealed carry permit. Uh, <laughs> that said, how dangerous is it not to do this? Yeah. That's really the question. We have a responsibility, and I, I think uh, not doing this is a far greater danger. Oh, it's, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't live with myself. Yeah. I mean, I really couldn't live with myself. I think we're all in that same boat. All right, let me go back to the, um, the question of the right. Doing the same thing with the left. Now, these are not people, because I think Barack Obama absolutely knows what he's doing, absolutely knows what's going on. But I'm not convinced that everybody has the same intent or has the same feeling or the understanding as Barack Obama does. Um, and let's look at the right, Grover Nordquist. Some people say he's a good guy. Some people say absolutely bad guy and was absolutely responsible for bringing a lot of bad guys into the Bush White House. Anybody want to take that? Look, there were bad guys who came into the Bush White House. I don't Nordquist could have brought some of them in. Other people brought people in. Uh, Sammy Al Arion, for example, who's been convicted of terrorism, had connections with both parties. Um, but, but what I think these guys have missed is, and, and we started this in 1993 with the Trade Center bombing, they want you to believe that terrorists kill wantonly, that there's no rationale for it. And that way, what They're it means crazy. is... Right. So there's like 13 knuckleheads in Jersey City, mm -hmm. and if we can just neutralize them, everything is fine. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is, the purpose of jihad is always and everywhere, violent or nonviolent, the implementation of Sharia, Islam's legal code, which is deemed to be the necessary precondition for Islamizing a society. Whether you are the nonviolent jihadists or the violent jihadists, they all want to get to the same place. The goal line is exactly the same. But the miniaturizing comes in with this conceit that we have that if somebody claims to be nonviolent, even if they want to supplant the United States, States Constitution with Sharia, which is a repressive code, they're somehow a moderate because they're willing to work within a the political system. process. Well, I have to tell you, as a, as a Christian, I look at our society and I say, uh, you know what, this needs some reform here because this is really, uh, this, the, we've the people need reform, mm -hmm. you know. You know, you'd say Islam is the answer. I say Jesus is the answer. Um, I don't want to change the laws per se, but I I do want to work within the system and say because you've got to have some self-regulation. But that's not. No. Well, no, it, no. 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 It's nothing to do with self-regulation. An Islamic society would outlaw the constitution. Right. So it's, it's not a matter of reform, it's a matter of destruction. Okay, tell me about the, the part in the documentary that I didn't get was the Freedom and Justice Party in Plano, Texas, 
somebody uh, in the Department of Homeland Security that took some records and is still there, and Janet Napolitano was like, da, da. <laughs> A guy by the name of Mohammed Elbiari, who is alleged to have, uh, have, have taken documents. Because he's on the Homeland Security Advisory Committee, he has access to sensitive information, and the issue is uh, whether he has used that access to, to gain uh, information. And we don't know the answer to that yet because uh, Napolitano hasn't gotten back to us yet. Uh, but I, but I must tell you, the, the more important thing about this, though, is that that body, that Homeland Security Advisory Committee, is making policy, counterterrorism policy for the United States, and they're also undermining successful counterterrorism models such as the one that Ray Kelly has used up in New York, which is, I think, responsible for keeping New York City safe for over 10 years since 9-11. Yeah, like As a former employee, I have to agree with Mr. McCarthy's assessment. Yeah, the NYPD uh, Intel's got it right. I really believe they do. Oh, yeah, no, I, I've heard that from a lot of my security guys. When we were up in, in New York, we would, you know, my security guys would go and they'd work with those guys a bit, and they would, the New York does have it down. Yeah, the, the expertise they have in the various communities yeah. is, actually, is actually amazing. Okay, so, um, so let me go now to, let me switch to um, the border. Uh, because here we are sitting, we're in Texas, and I'm sitting right here by the border, and um, people, are, you know, I say, I'm, I was worried, you know, about living down in Texas, because that, and be like, oh, no, that, you know, that's a long way away from the border. <laughs> really? Is it? <laughs> I mean, we find out, what is the number? I wrote this down. Eight, uh, let's see, f 250 city network in the United States alone, mm -hmm. these drug cartels. Any doubt from anybody that Hezbollah or, or or nasty groups from the Middle East are working hand in hand with the drug cartels. Different purposes, but working together. No Any doubt. Yeah. No question. Sure. And for fundraising and such, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, so everything that the drug cartels have, the the ability to get something into the country. Right. Mm -hmm. Easy. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Any any idea what we have, what what we're looking at here in the country? Well, can I tell you something I've always been perplexed by, which is the kit gloves that we've treated Iran with. Now, Hezbollah is Iran's forward militia, right? Since 1979, Iran has been at war with the United States. All this business about, you know, are you warmongering with Iran? They're at war with us, whether we right. decide to be with, at war with them. They killed 19 of our Air Force at Cobar Towers in 1996. They probably were involved in the 9-11 attacks, even according to the 9-11 yes. Commission. They fueled the insurgency in Iraq and Afghanistan. They, 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 I mean, they just sent they an country. operative, right. yeah. an operative right. into, Washington into Washington to kill two ambassadors. Right. Yes. And the USS Cole. Right. 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 So why do we let them get away with these things? And you have to wonder if part of it is, are we worried that Hezbollah is here? You know, if Al Qaeda were here, I think they would attack us. The second they had the capability of doing it, they would do it. Hezbollah. I'm well, not what so is it sure. about the 800 sensitive sites? 800 sensitive sites. Well, these are that are sites around. that they are targeting. These are infra <clears throat> infrastructure type sites, like uh, as they said, nuclear power plants, uh, water uh, facilities, and bridges, and that type of thing. That's but, what he was uh, saying. And here's I, I, an example: the, Ali Muhammad who was an al-Qaeda operative, cased the U.S. Embassy in Kenya in 1994. They put that on a shelf, yeah. and they took it off a shelf in 1998 and acted on it and blew up sure. the embassy there. Look, Glenn, as, as well, you're discussing these networks, particularly in the case of Hezbollah, um, I think that you're asking, you, know, you, you mentioned a very good point, which is that al-Qaeda would strike if they were here, had an operational cell. I think that's pretty clear. So why wouldn't Hezbollah, given the ties we're talking about? I think that some of these groups, Hezbollah being one of them, believe that they're playing for the control of nation states now, back in the Middle East. I think they see places up for grabs. They're getting involved in other areas of the world where they can actually become the government. We're seeing this in Egypt. We could see it very soon in Syria. We could see it soon in other places across the Arab Maghreb. So I think that that's a focus. And so when you have a, an established fundraising network that is global in nature and can provide cash and possibly arms back to these areas, that can but, become more. I mean, if you could run Egypt, that's more important than pulling off a one-off attack. But you also uh, have, I mean, I remember talking to a special, op, uh, special ops guy, you know, retired years ago when the Soviet Union was collapsing. And uh, he came over to my house a few years ago, about maybe five, six years ago, and he said, Glenn, if they're not, if, 
if operatives from hostile nations aren't here right now, yeah. they will be soon because that's what we used to do. We go to countries that we were trying to push sure. over the edge. They're here. They may not be bombing us, but they're pushing us yes. over the edge. And our Congress should be looking into this. I mean, besides, besides the incidents you mentioned of Iran, we have evidence Iran is involved in 9-11. And, of course, the Marine barracks bombing, the very maiden act of Hezbollah back in, in 80, 83. Um, our Congress should be asking these questions. I mean, it's all very well and for us to be talking about it, but this is, this is an absolute scandal that Congress has not taken this on and gotten to the bottom of these questions. Why? Just a, a quick point. Why you, is you said what's coming question. across the border. Well, it's the people that are coming across first. And there's no question, there are establishing cells here in America. Now, if you go back to the five-phase plan that was discovered in El Barassi's basement in 2004 in Annandale, Virginia, they lay out a five-phase plan. Our FBI has had that since 2004. But there ultimately comes to the fifth phase, which is conflict. Mm -hmm. And these cells are being established around America right now with specific targets. And when you reach that phase, they will come out of the, their, their underground and they will be part of the armed conflict. They're doing that right now. Okay, uh, when we come back, the next question from you. Is there anyone in our government in a position of power who is aware of this, has the will and the power to do something to reverse it. Next. Democrats maintain their Senate majority. Harry Reid celebrates. Don't let this happen. You still have the power to take the Senate. Glenn Beck and FreedomWorks for America are committed to mobilizing millions of patriots to fire Harry and take the Senate. We must begin now. Donate $20.12 to TakeTheSenate.com and get this great bumper sticker. Glenn Beck, FreedomWorks, and you, an unstoppable force. But we must have your donation today. Go to TakeTheSenate.com now. Preparation, focus, hard work. It's a personal commitment. It's what drives me. It gives me the confidence to look my opponent in the eye and say, game on. Preparing for life's future challenges is just as important. Food Insurance Emergency Food Supply gives me the same assurance that I'm ready for whatever comes my way. Preparation is everything. Order today at foodinsurance.com. The TRS file. True Tax Resolution Stories. Hi, I'm Stuart B. I'm in the insurance industry and I'm from Southern California. I faced a potential liability of $106,000. Tax Resolution Services settled for $9,200. If you owe the IRS over $20,000 or more in back taxes, have unfiled returns, or are under audit, call Tax Resolution Services now, 888-7804-TAX, or visit taxresolution.com forward slash GBTV. Order is so unbelievably out of control. Uh, it's it's shocking the lies that are going on. I, I've seen more stuff on the border in this last documentary than I've seen on mainstream television. I don't know how long. Maybe maybe a year combined. Um, and no one, no one in the press is willing to do anything. No one in the government's willing to do anything. Nobody's willing to tell you the truth. So the question was from the audience. Is there anyone who has the power and the will, the guts to do it, and can get it done? Um, or maybe a secondary question is, what do we the people do when our government is completely out of control to get somebody to, to, to pay attention to this? Our leadership has abdicated its responsibility to a man, top to bottom. There's no one, there's no one in charge who's doing anything to take care of this nation. And I would say to, I get this, this question from readers of my column who ask, what can, what can I do? What can I do as a citizen? There's not much citizens can do, but they can ride their elected officials. I mean, you have, you have Arizona law, yeah. you know, S, what is it, SB uh, 1070, 1070, that is now being um, 
now being challenged yeah. in the in the courts. But Outrageous. I mean, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you can you can get people to do that. If it weren't for the public, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed would have gotten a civilian trial in New York. Uh, the political forces in the country don't want to deal with this, but they will still deal with it when they have to. And I know for a fact that there are good people inside the government who, who care passionately and worry just like we worry about this. But the fact is that the ruling class, look, if, if, if you have the atrocity you had at Fort Hood, where twice as many people were killed as were killed in the World Trade Center attack, that's a jihadist terrorist attack. The military puts out a 70-something page report, doesn't mention the word Islam in it, doesn't mention the word jihad in it. Treats it as a straight-up homicide. It case. was a, it was a workplace violence. violence. Right. That's crazy. So right. it's worse so, than but crazy. This is what yeah, this is what scares me is yeah. the military is still the number one thing Americans trust. They still trust the military. But how does the military put out a piece that says workplace violence? Everybody, everybody in this country knows that's insane. The military, the military has become the, the premier vehicle for Islamization in the United States. That's right. And remember, the, the principal civilian control of the military. The military is responding to the directives from the administration. But I will tell you, there are members of Congress that get it. There are members of Congress that are as concerned that. about this as any of us sitting on this set today. I will tell you this, that never have I received in probably, I think, a two-day period, Never have I received more phone calls from members of the Cong uh, uh, Congress out of the blue. When this started to happen with all the you know, things being taken out, I had six congressmen call me in two days mm -hmm. and say, and all separate, didn't know each other, called and said, Glenn, you're the only one I know that will actually talk about this. You have to know about this. This is insane. And it was almost a fever pitch. They were, they were really concerned, and it took them by surprise. They need to go to their microphone in on the floor and say that in the and case, tell people. In the case of the border, there are very powerful interests arrayed against doing anything, actually, though, as we know. There are, there's, the, there's the concern that both parties have over the Hispanic vote, obviously, going into the election. And there's also small business owners who don't, who like the way things are right well, now. Well, look at, yeah. I mean, look at, and this, look people at, don't talk about it that way, Glenn, but that's the way it is. Look at yeah. what happens in, uh, with Alan West. I mean, Alan West has said some pretty brave things here in the last few weeks mm -hmm. he's getting torn apart and do you see anybody rally behind him I mean no yeah you know I don't know where he stands on this issue but on uh, you know saying hey the the progressive caucus <laughs> they're Marxists yeah he's he's historically accurate and he's accurate to the to the to the Communist Party USA website <laughs> you know what I mean yeah, well he's he's very strong on this issue but, but I think we should make clear that the, the problem is, uh, particularly with the military, is the brass. I mean, we hear from guys who serve all the time. We hear from people who are on the front lines. We hear from agents in, in, on the law enforcement side who hear, who are every bit as troubled as we are by this phenomenon. But the problem is the ruling class in the country. They have guts, but they don't have the power to do anything about exactly. it. Exactly. Well, just, just today, the Joint Chiefs Chairman, Martin Dempsey, ordered a uh, review of all the training materials to make sure none of them are anti-Islamic. This, this came out just today. How do we survive? How does our military survive with this? You know, Don Rumsfeld said uh, just within the last six months, he said to Farid Zakaria, uh, yeah, we made some mistakes, and the first mistake we made was we didn't identify the enemy because we were afraid we were going to offend someone. That should be a message to this current administration, and more importantly, to Leon Panetta today. They made the terrible mistake of not identifying the enemy. You know, during the Cold War, we, knew we, we not were. only studied the Russians, but we taught people the Russian language, history, and culture. We have yet to do that now that we are up against an enemy that's undefined. I wish I just took it out of the safe and, and, uh, and transferred it to the library. But yesterday I had a, a Koran printed in 1806 by Jefferson. And it, has, it was printed by the federal government. Right. And it had a two-page warning right at the beginning. Because we were fighting overseas. Barbary Wars. Right. 
it was our first uh, our first experience with radicalized Islam or Islam to the shores of Tripoli yeah. exactly right mm -hmm. and and in it is the warning saying everyone has to read this yeah. and it was and I just talked to Dave Martin about it he said at the time it was very popular it was there were a lot of these copies out there because people wanted to know what are we fighting not now and certainly there's nothing printed by the federal government with a warning of saying these guys are going to kill you if you don't wake up. Even at that time, the justification was in fact given that we are allowed to enslave because it was over enslaving you know, Americans and other Europeans is that you are infidels and we are given a, a right to do this through our beliefs. That was actually stated in, in the run up to then Jefferson said, I'm going to commission a Navy and we're going to come and get you. Um, let me talk to you two a little bit on this on this topic on um, EMP. A, um, how realistic do you think that is? And B, um, what what the heck happened where where it could pass the House? Everybody's on board, and then it goes to the Senate, it just dies. Either it's very yeah. real. I mean, the, the technology. Is uh, it has been proven. Do you do you believe that's why they're firing those? I've heard that from I several do. people. Yes, I do. They're firing them straight up out in the Caspian Sea there, and and saying, "Oh, another missile failed." Well, you don't I, fire a missile straight up. <laughs> Not the way they're doing it. No. Okay. And. Uh, I think that uh, I think that EMP is a real danger, and it and it's not EMP that would have to be fired from Iran. There are a number of places, Venezuela being one of them, at sea being another, that you could get a missile up over America. I think the estimates are about 200 miles over the center of the the country, and it wipes out 90 percent of the it's, uh, electromagnetic. It's uh, it's my understanding that before we could respond, it would explode because you would be tracking it before we w before we could take it out because it would explode before unless you knew it was EMP you wouldn't take it out earlier is it is that your understanding of it or I defer to the general yeah uh, I, I defer to Buck on that one too <laughs> I don't know but uh, I've sat in rooms with enough generals to know that when you don't know the answer <laughs> defer to the general don't, don't ask um, okay um, I I I want to urge you as a viewer of this network um, you helped pay for this documentary. We put it together. We found brave people to speak about it. Um, you know, you saw the helicopter we rented down at the border and everything else, and we made it. But now it is up to you. Now it is critical that you invite your friends and your family. Um, you get as many people as you possibly can. Yeah. You know that Koenig video that came out that went viral so fast? I, I mean, I, I have to tell you, um, you could look at this as politics if you wanted to. I think that's a foolish way to do it. But uh, you could look at this just as politics. Who would have a... Who wouldn't say, I, I've got a reasonable doubt here that I'm not sure, what, I'm not sure where loyalties lie here and, or, or at least basic understanding of, of the Muslim Brotherhood? Um, but I... I tend to look at it, as I think all of you do, as this is the end of America as we know it if this stuff isn't put in check. Um, pass this on to as many people as you possibly can. It's now up to you. Back in a minute. Barack Obama becomes the president in November again. I will either be dead or in jail by this time next year. The Romney campaign told NBC News that contrary to Nugent's claims, they never solicited his endorsement. Someone like Ted Nugent is, should be put in jail forever. It's repugnant and repulsive. The Secret Service has plans to meet with rocker Ted Nugent tomorrow. Agents, of course, will question him about those controversial comments. They want to know what his intent was. <laughs> I just asked the crew, anybody 
Anybody have one thing they want to say? You said, thanks for doing this. I did. I say the same thing back to you. Um, and the border guards that are involved and everybody else that came with information for this documentary. Now, it's up to you to make sure that uh, something's done with it. I hope we don't have to do Rumors of War 4 unless it has a happy ending. But again, I think that's up to you. Call your congressman, spread the word, get everybody you know to watch this documentary. Uh, tweet it, put it on Facebook, spread it as much and as fast as you possibly can. Times are changing rapidly. You'll notice as you watch the events of the day unfold, it'll seem as though your clock is running at a much faster pace. From Dallas, good night, America. Let me ask you this. Uh, this is... If reasonable Americans, not partisan on either side, reasonable Americans would watch what we've just seen for the last hour and 13 minutes, I can't believe that's not a knockout punch for any president. I don't care who it is. Because there's more than reasonable doubt that we're in real trouble and this administration is dismantling us from the inside. Anybody want to take that on? We've actually had a number of trials involving jihadists over the years. When you show ordinary people exactly what is going on and why it goes on, they get it instantly. Uh, I think the reason that people aren't more outraged is that they're, they're, they haven't seen they don't know. enough of this. They don't know. I mean, um, I've worked at CNN and I've worked at Fox. You were kicked off of CNN. Uh, just This guy's going to come over and kill us. He means it. And it, it always just goes down to politics, and nobody actually reads the words. And in this case, Buck, the words are different in America than they are when they're speaking to their own people in, in Arabic. They, they say all kinds of stuff in Arabic. Uh, it's common, common practice. I mean, this has been the case going back. Well, Arafat was actually really the master of this, saying one thing in Arabic and then one thing when the CNN cameras were on in English. Uh, I think he sort of established a, a high bar for that, actually. It's just saying completely disparate things depending on the audience. Um, and, and, and as for penetrations, I have to say, even to this day, uh, we're, we're discussing how, how could this happen? How could there be people involved with government that have these sorts of views or have these connections? Uh, people still refuse to admit that there were communist penetrations of the United States government. Even after the declassification of the Venona cables, books have been written on this. But, but, Alger Hiss, I mean, there's still arguments about this. People still act like that did not happen. I, found a, I just found a quote from FDR, who was, was uh, given a speech, and he said, look, some... Hello, America. As you just saw in Rumors of War 3, Target U.S., it is obvious that terrorists are in this country, that they have either infiltrated or we have just opened up the front, back, and side door of our government and welcomed them in. They're using our own resources to work against us. The administration is acting, I believe, as an unindicted co-conspirator. We wanted to spend a few minutes here in the next 45 minutes and take some of your questions and also just kind of talk about what we've seen. Joining me now, Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin. He is former Undersecretary for Defense for Intelligence. Diana West is here. She's the author of Death of the Grown-Up. Andrew McCarthy, former uh, federal prosecutor and author of The Grand Jihad. And Buck Sexton, formerly with the uh, CIA and currently our national security editor for The Blaze. Um, first of all, Glenn. All you have to do is go to the websites for these organizations that we were talking about, these front groups for the Muslim Brotherhood. Go to their websites. Read what they've written. Listen on YouTube to the speeches that they've made. They have made very clear their intentions for America. Yet even when we uh, explain what they've said, what they've written, we get marginalized and, and we are the ones that are considered 
intolerant. And uh, it, if you just pay attention to what they say, you will know exactly what their intentions are. I mean, that's, you know, people say to me all the time, uh, boy, how did you see that one coming? Well, you listen to them. <laughs> Right. You take people, in 1999, I was on the air in, in uh, New York City, and conservatives who didn't know who I was, conservatives were calling me because I was defending uh, Bill Clinton when he bombed the missile, or the, uh, the baby aspirin factory. Yeah. And I said, have you read the words of Osama bin Laden for saying the president was a Marxist in 2008? Socialist. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, imagine, uh, uh, imagine what they would say here. Well, people, viewers, American citizens, do not have context to simply look at what you've put on tonight and have it resonate with what they've been hearing their elected officials say, what they read in the newspapers, etc. That's what makes it very difficult to push these ideas because they have been withheld due to censorship and self-censorship. And smeared. Anybody who says this. I mean, I was, watching the, I was watching Twitter as this thing was on. The attacks of hate monger Glenn Beck's at it again. All this stuff just pops up right away. I mean, you're immediately smeared. And, you know, I, I responded on, on Twitter tonight. Any responsible, honest journalist would either disprove these facts or air this. One of the two. But they'll do neither because they can't disprove it. Here's the thing.